hi everyone so we are passing on to the uh, next two organ systems of uh, branchiostoma that is the last two systems we are supposed to deal it is the excretory system and the nervous system okay now branchiostoma the excretory system the major excretory system of uh, branchiostoma it is protonephridia but we can see that uh, there are uh, further organs and cells which are uh, found to be excretory in function they are hashex nephridium brown funnels and renal papillae okay now uh, protonephridia and ha um, hashex nephridium we'll be dealing it in detail but first we will see what are brown funnels and renal papillae now brown funnels uh, they are paired structures uh, sac like funnel shaped uh, structures and they are situated dorsally uh, on the posterior end of the pharynx that is just towards the posterior end of the pharynx dorsally and it is placed one on either side of the mid dorsal line okay uh, so since it is funnel shaped it will have a broader uh, end as well as a narrower end right the narrower end it is uh, anteriorly directed and it opens into the dorsal synovial canal of each side okay you have right and the left brown funnel isn't it so uh, the narrow anterior end it opens into the synovial canal of its side fine while the broad uh, posterior end it opens into the atrium okay so what happens is uh, from uh, since from the synovial uh, cavity or the synovial canal the uh, waste substances it is filtered out into the brown funnel and it is excreted out into the atrium this is what the um, uh, for the what you call the excretory function is made uh, brought about okay then uh, renal papillae are, they are groups of cells and it is present on the floor of the atrial cavity and uh, this it is found to have uh, excretory function but it is not completely studied okay now we'll look into it uh, look into the details of uh, protonephridia the structure and uh, the hashix uh, nephridium how it brings about the excretion okay now where these uh, where are these uh, protonephridia located Pro protonephridia are located on the uh, pharyngeal wall uh, they are simple uh, ciliated sac like tubular structures okay uh, and it is seen that these are protonephridia we, we uh, so this uh, branchiostoma is a cephalochordate coming under the phalanchordata but what happens is we cannot find a protonephridia in any of the what you call uh, the um, vertebrates okay they are different from the kidneys and vertebrates and we cannot find in these kinds of uh, protonephridia anywhere in the chordate uh, groups but it is closely resemble the protonephridia found in the branchiostoma closely resemble that found in the polychaetes the annelids okay and uh, hence we can say that this is an example for parallel e evolution now what is parallel evolution parallel evolution is the evolution of structures in two entirely different uh, groups of organisms they these are uh, a group of groups of organisms doesn't have any connection ancestrally so they don't have any ancestral connections so even then if they uh, develop uh, characters very closely resemble uh, of closely uh, close resemblance we can say that it is parallel evolution uh, another example of parallel evolution we can see the wings in the case of butterflies and wings in the case of uh, birds so uh, in both the, the wings are present and both in both the cases it is used for flying but they are not developed from the same what you call uh, the ancestor okay so uh, the structure is different the uh, what you call uh, evolutionary pathway is different so there also we can find it is parallel evolution here we can see it is a parallel evolution okay fine back here the protonephridia so we were uh, telling that protonephridia it is a ciliated tubular sac like structure and we can find it located on the uh, pharyngeal wall dorsolateral pharyngeal wall and uh, it is a uh, uh, usually found associated with each gill slit one above each gill slit okay and um, we can find 90 to 100 pairs of uh, these protonephridia arranged along the dorsolateral wall or in the pharynx okay and e you, can, you can find over here it is uh, found above each gill slit isn't it so here you can find one gill slit here so it is this um, this is the protonephridia and another protonephridia and here is the gill slit we have this is an, a third one and here is a gill slit so you can find every uh, gill slit do have uh, sorry what you call gill slit do have the 
progenephridia present on above that okay and if we uh, study the structure you can see the uh, structurally each protonephridium it is um, bent somewhat like a question mark isn't it and it is bent and it develops two limbs okay one is the horizontal limb this is the horizontal limb and this is the vertical limb okay and it is found that if the vertical limb always lies in the coelomic canal okay this is the coelomic canal this shaded area okay it lies in the coelomic canal um of the what you call the primary gill bar okay when we discussed about the uh, uh, the structure of the pharyngeal wall the we saw that the there is two kinds of gill bars or gills um, that is primary gill bar and the secondary gill bar and these two are different with respect to the presence of coelomic canal in the case of primary gill bar okay so this vertical limb of each of the protonephridia it is located inside the coelomic canal of the primary gill bar okay uh, so here is the um, vertical limb and uh, this um, sorry uh, it uh, you can see here just one minute okay okay here you can see that it is blunt over here it is blind ending blindly right and you can find that all around this one you have the coelomic canal okay so it is the coelomic canal surrounding the uh, tip of the uh, vertical limb okay right so uh, the horizontal limb on the other hand it uh, lies in the dorsal coelomic canal um, but it opens into the atrium yeah okay but opens into the atrium by way of the nephridio pore okay so this is the dose um, what you call uh, horizontal limb and uh, this part is the vertical limb okay the vertical limb the end is uh, blunt or blindly ending and it is placed inside the coelomic canal while the uh, horizontal limb do have opening the nephridio pore which opens out into the atrium okay and usually the nephridio pore it is placed um, yeah here you can see associated with the secondary gill bar okay so the dorsal and the anterior surface over here in the case of uh, uh, the protonephridium you can see th this is the dorsal uh, and this is the anterior surface okay so the dorsal and the anterior surfaces um, of each protonephridium do possess um, um, what you call small projections okay like or it is uh, small branches right and you can see these are the branches marked over here side branches isn't it this is the side branches right there are plenty of them all along the dorsal and the um, anterior part okay and each of these uh, side branches bear structures known as solenocytes okay it is solenocyte okay uh, something is missing it is c y T E S. Okay, so a nephridium uh, bears about five hundred solenocytes. A single proton nephridium bears almost five hundred uh, solenocytes on them. I hope it is clear here. Okay, so the proton each proton nephridium it is bent question mark shape structure. Uh, the, it is placed in, uh, on the primary gill bar, and uh, it is each of the proton nephridium it is composed of a horizontal limb as well as a vertical limb. The tip of the vertical limb which is blind blindly ending it is placed inside the coelomic canal of the primary gill bar. Okay, while the horizontal uh, limb of the proton nephridium it bears a nephridio pore which opens into the atrium at the secondary gill bar. Okay, all along the dorsal and the anterior um, what you call edges of the uh, this one proton nephridium it it gives out branches. Okay, the, the side branches and each branch bears solenocytes on them. That uh, we can say that uh, there are solenocytes on the branches and the solenocytes opens into the lumen inside the uh, what you call so uh, the proton nephridium at the branches i hope it is clear okay it is this the solenocytes they open into the branches of the proton nephridium 
is it okay fine now uh, we can see the structure of solenocyte now fine it is actually the solenocyte which directly uh, helps in um, filtration of waste materials from the uh, the silomic fluid and uh, giving like uh, extracting it out and then uh, mo mo uh, what you call uh, um, disposing it into the lumen of the uh, proton nephridium and from there it is let out into the atrium through the nephridiopod. Okay. Now the uh, each solenocyte is um, when we study this is the structure. One minute. Okay. So here you can see. Okay. Uh, so this is the uh, what you call the branch of the proton nephridium. Okay. And then uh, coming over here this is the uh, solenocyte okay you can see over one two three likewise there are plenty of solenocytes projecting out from the branch side branches of the um, the the what you call from the side branches of the um, progenephridium okay now when we study the structure of the solenocyte uh, each solenocyte it is almost like 50 micron uh, micrometer in length and it consists of you can this is one solenocyte okay the structure which which i have drawn this is one solenocyte this single one okay this is a single one and uh, we can see that each uh, yeah um, solenocyte it consists of a nucleated cell body so this is the cell body green part okay this is a cell body and uh, center you can see nucleus and it is marked as nu and cb represents the cell body okay so it contains a nucleated cell body and a long stalk which connects it with the outer wall of the side branch of the uh, protonephridium okay uh, and this uh, the lumen inside the uh, stalk it is actually opening into the um, protonephridium okay and it opens out into the lumen of the pro pro uh, the branch of the protonephridium through a small opening right and we can see that from the uh, nucleated cell body arises a flagellum okay a long flagellum that uh, arises from the cell body the what you call the basal body in the cell and it extends through the tubule of the solenocyte and it uh, enters projects freely into the lumen of the protonephridium okay so this is how it happens the protonephridium it is richly supplied with blood vessels that is they are all vascular and similarly solenocytes they uh, they project the cell the nucleated cell body of the the solenocyte it actually projects into the silomic fluid so the um, what you call um, uh, waste materials from the silomic fluid simply diffuses into the the solenocytes and from there it moves through the opening into the um, what you call uh, Mm, this one proton nephridium okay so nitrogenous waste they are extracted by the solenocytes by way of simple diffusion from the blood as well as the silomic fluid and it is disposed of into the nephri proton nephridium and from there through the nephridiopore it is it enters into the atrium and from there it is passed out of the body through uh, atriopore along with the outgoing water current so this is how the whole process of um, what you call excretion takes place with the help of the um, this one uh, what you call uh, the protonephridium okay the next structure is uh, the hash x nephridium okay yeah you can see the hash x nephridium over here on oh, just one minute okay uh, this is actually uh, the oral wood when you see it from the bottom okay the anterior part of the uh, this one when we see it from the ventral side this is how it uh, looks okay and you can see the the uh, hash x nephridium extending out along the uh, dosal wall and uh, it is actually on uh, just one minute okay okay um yeah here now it, it is visible so you can see the notochord isn't that this is the notochord right and this uh, hash x nephridium it is placed on one side of the uh, notochord okay so that is a uh, what you call position and it is present in the oral hood region okay you can see the wheel uh, organ you can see the velum the part the structure here you can see the velum and the oral syrri extending out isn't it so this part is actually the uh, oral uh, hood region okay um, yes 
so uh, a single uh, long straight tube it forms a hashix nephridium and you can see from the sides of the hashix nephridium arises small structures which projects out isn't it they also do have an important role in the um, excretion okay this hashix nephridium it lies in the uh, roof of the oral hood towards the left and ventral side of the notochord okay this its anterior end it blindly uh, ends just uh, in front of the or just posterior to the what you call uh, this one the notochord okay and uh, it is usually uh, ectodermal in origin and you can see that it is almost like proteinephridium because of those finger like structures which projects out and those are actually the solenocytes okay and it uh, just like how the solenocytes function in the case of um, proteinephridium here also the uh, the solenocytes it projects into the celomic fluid as well as the blood and it extracts out the base materials it moves through the tubules and it is uh, poured into the hashix nephridium okay and the hashix nephridium uh, we can see that these hashix uh, nephridium uh, it uh, opens into the prebranchial sac of the pharynx i hope you remember the prebranchial sac uh, that is the that part of the pharynx which doesn't have any gills less that is a prebranchial sac so it opens into the prebranchial sac and so all those uh, waste materials which are collected from the anterior part of the body from the blood as well as the celomic canal it is poured into the uh, uh, prebranchial sac and from there it is being collected uh, by along with it is it passes out through the water and it moves out through the uh, what do you call atrio um, into the atrium and from there through the atropod it moves out along with the outgoing water so these are the four structures which helps in uh, excretion we saw what is uh, the yes uh, the proteinephridium how it works what are the structure then uh, what is uh, this one the like uh, hashix nephridium then brown funnel and the renal papillae okay so these are the structures which help in the excretion now next one is um, uh, nervous system okay um, as we have already seen that branchiostoma completely lacks a um, very uh, develop, well developed uh, head region and hence it doesn't have any brain as well so well developed brain it is completely uh, absent unlike other higher caudates okay it is just represented by nerve coat and uh, uh, the nerves arising from the nerve cord okay now uh, this here it is uh, the picture given as actually the nerve cord okay so how the um, nerve cord is we can just see how the uh, nerve cord uh, is uh, seen the central nerve system it is actually represented by the uh, dorsal tubular nerve cord which is present uh, just above or just dorsal to the notochord okay uh, passing mid -do along the mid dorsal line and as seen you can see that it doesn't have any ganglia okay it doesn't have any ganglia and its anterior end it terminates uh, abruptly in the rostrum uh, just um, behind the anterior end of the notochord so anterior, uh, the notochord extends forward while it the uh, nerve cord it abruptly ends just behind the notochord okay and you can see uh, all uh, towards the anterior end it uh, shows a small enlargement a slight enlargement and that is considered to be the cerebral vesicle okay here you can see this part is the cerebral vesicle okay this is the projection and this part is the cerebral vesicle okay over here in this diagram and over here uh, actually this part is the cerebral vesicle okay how can you uh, actually identify the cerebral vesicle it is from the cerebral vesicle two cerebral nerves arise this is the first one pair okay the two pairs okay the first pair and this is the second pair the second cerebral nerve okay i'm sorry so the two cerebral nerves arise from the cerebral vesicle okay and posterior to that this part right this is the spinal cord so posterior part of this one tapers uh, towards the end and that part is actually the spinal cord and uh, yes so inside that uh, just one minute yeah so inside the cerebral vesicle as well as the uh, what do you call the nerve cord behind that is a uh, spinal cord you can see it encloses a neuroceal or central canal and neuroceal it is uh, filled with cerebrospinal fluid just like we as we can see in the higher cortex okay now um, 
this cerebral vesicle i mean the neurocil it uh, dilates inside the cerebral vesicle to form what is referred as a ventricle and uh, different types of ventricles we will be learning in higher college this is just a very primitive form of ventricle which is found in the branchiostomal um, uh, nervous system okay now uh, yes uh, what are the other structures we can find with uh, in association with the uh, cerebral vesicle and the spinal cord so this is the uh, what we see from the side okay this picture is uh, yeah so this picture is what we see from the side okay so what happens is uh, you can see this is the uh, spinal cord this is cerebral vesicle okay along the dorsal side uh, or to the uh, dorsal side the cerebral vesicle it gives off a small uh, pouch like structure a blind pouch like st structure and it forms the dorsal diverticula okay uh, this from the side we can see this is the structure cerebral vesicle and the spinal cord okay and towards the dorsal side of the cerebral vesicle it gives off blind pouch which is known as the dorsal diverticula is it okay so this di uh, dorsal diverticula it extends behind over the uh, the what you call the spinal cord or what we call the central canal and um, it ends up blindly as a blind pouch okay right now um, what are the other structures we can see so that's a dorsal uh, diverticulum another structure which you can see is the yeah pigment spot okay this is the uh, anterior pigment spot right this whole structure and this is you can see over here in this figure when you see it from the dorsal side this is how it is seen so, so the uh, this is the central pigment spot over here you can see so the central pigment so spot or the anterior pigment spot is a single structure which do have uh, uh, it is a light sensitive structure okay even though it doesn't form any uh, image or it doesn't help in, uh, it is it is not uh, like a it doesn't help in any image formation but it is a uh, light sensitive structure and it is a single uh, spot found anterior to the um, cerebral vesicle okay and another one it is the infundibular organ you can see over here uh, on this in this figure you can see the infundibular organ it is yet another uh, um, sense organ which is uh, closely associated with the cerebral vesicle okay the third one which we can see is the colical spit over here you can see okay this is yet another sensory structure so we saw uh, just one minute okay we saw uh, dorsal diverticulum another structure is anterior pigment spot the third one is uh, infundibular organ the fourth one is colical speed all these structures are uh, closely associated with the cerebral vesicle okay and then you can find lateral ocelli okay just sorry in the lateral ocelli or the eyes uh, um, when we saw, uh, saw the pigment spot it was single in structure placed anteriorly but ocelli they are plenty in number okay and this is the structures which you can find very closely associated with the um, cerebral vesicle okay coming back to the nervous system and the nerves okay as already seen cerebral vesicle it gives off two pairs of cerebral nerves the first cerebral nerve over here and the second cerebral nerve over here okay from the spinal cord arises uh, the spinal nerves okay and each of the spinal nerve if you see um, okay each of the spinal nerves when we see it possess this, just we will take one spinal nerve over here okay you can see there is a dorsal root isn't it here there is a dorsal root and the ventral root so what is unique about these two dorsal root it is single in number while ventral root there are multiple uh, ventral roots okay one secondly uh, spinal nerves are always paired so this is the uh, okay this is the first pair one and this this the, this is one pair but you can see it is not symmetrically arranged isn't it always on one side it is slightly above the other from the other side so and what happens is the dorsal root of uh, a spinal nerve it is almost at the same level as that of the ventral root of the other in the pair okay so uh, this is how it is usually being placed so each pair of spinal nerves includes dorsal as well as ventral nerve roots 
okay and um, the dorsal nerve root you can see it is both sensory and motor that is uh, it is a mixed nerve while the ventral nerve root it is motor in function okay and it always uh, we can see it is uh, present at different levels the pair the the two in the pair it always it is uh, it doesn't uh, uh, start or begin at the same level the dorsal and the ventral roots of a particular pair doesn't originate at the same level but you can see that the dorsal root of one side lies uh, just opposite to the ventral root of the other side okay so this is how it is i hope this is clear okay now we can see how the uh, what you call the nerves it branches off so at one particular level we can see one we are just uh, looking into a single um, spinal nerve okay so you have the dorsal root of the spinal nerve and you have multiple numbers of ventral roots okay what happens is this dorsal root or the ventral root whichever it is it moves in between the myotomes so these are the myotomes okay these are the myotomes and here also you can see the myotomes right so it moves in between the myotomes and then gives off branches to the specific uh, what you call areas innervate specific areas okay here also you can see it innervates the myotomes we to we saw that ventral root ventral nerve root they are motor in function so obviously the motor nerves have to end up in muscles or it has to end up in certain glands so here you can see it ends up in the muscles okay myotomes it represents the muscles fine while dorsal root is both uh, sensory as well as motor isn't it it's a mixed nerve so here, here you can see it arises from here and the sensory branch it goes off into the uh, dorsal side while the mixed branch it moves down towards the alimentary canal and even further is it clear okay this is how the, the structure of the um, the distribution of the dorsal and the ventral nerve roots are okay now we can see the nerve uh, the different sense organs associated with the nervous system okay the first one we can see it is a um, ocelli we'll uh, just check the structure over here okay so this is the ocelli okay uh, as we have already seen there are plenty of uh, eye spots or ocelli associated um, i mean found along the sides of the body isn't it so uh, these are actually photoreceptor or light sensitive organs and they are distributed along the ventrolateral sides of the nerve cord we already saw it in the previous figure okay and uh, um, each uh, eye spot if we see it is made up of two cells okay this is a single eye spot right so we can see that it is made up of two cells the outer one it is known as the melanocyte and the inner one it is the photosensitive cell okay so this uh, darkly pigmented part it is the melanocyte and the lower one almost a pyramidal shape okay this is the photosensitive cell now uh, the yeah the melanocyte and the photosensitive cell in between these two regions or at the junction of these two regions you can see the striated apical border this functions like a uh, lens okay so this is uh, uh, where the actually um, what you call uh, the light capturing and focusing is done through the apical border okay and the photosensitive cell it gives off the optic nerve from the um, inner part of the photosensitive cell so this is the part external i hope it is clear okay so that is a um, eye spot or ocelli the next one we can find is the infundibular organ oh, one minute okay now infundibular organ uh, as we saw in the, the figure uh, previous one it is located at the floor of the cerebral vent, uh, vesicle right and it is so named because of its um, uh, resemblance with the infundibulum of the vertebrate brain so when we study the uh, brain of uh, the higher cortex we can see that they do have a structure referred as infundibulum it is found on the floor of the ventricle and that part it is uh, so here the infundibular organ is almost uh, similar to the uh, infundibulum of the vertebrate vertebrate brain with respect to the evolution or the origin of the organ okay and it consists of <coughs> yeah so it uh, this uh, what you call um, infundibular organ it consists of tall columnar strongly ciliated epithelial cells and uh, uh, these uh, 
internally these the this organ it gives out uh, resinous fiber uh, which extends posteriorly inside the neurocil neurocil i hope you remember it is the um, lumen or the canal inside the uh, the nerve cord okay um, there are different functions assigned to them but uh, it is believed that these um, infundibular organs they uh, yeah. Uh, infundibular organ they have uh, uh, rio reception rio in the sense it is a uh, pressure it detects pressure it receives pressure stimulus okay so it is considered to be a rio receptor okay so these are the two structures which you need to learn in detail now we can see the previous um, yeah what are the other structures okay even though the structure of these sense organs you need to learn, but we'll see what are the functions and where they are located. Okay, the next one is cephalic pigment spot. Okay, this is the one anterior pigment spot which we uh, located in the uh, when we studied the nervous system. Okay, it is anterior to the cerebral vesicle. It's a large pigmented spot found on the anterior wall of the, uh, the cerebral vesicle. Okay, uh, it lacks any uh, lens or uh, the photosensitive cell and thus it doesn't form any images okay so here it is just um, considered to be a thermal receptor um, specifically a thermal receptor okay rather than be uh, a photo receptor it is considered to be a thermal receptor now the next one is colicus pit mm -hmm. i hope you remember colicus pit is was actually a depression found uh, dosal to the uh, cerebral vesicle it was it is located on the roof of the uh, cerebral vesicle slightly uh, um, shifted towards the anterior end and this colicus pit it marks the area where the larval neuropore closes when the adult neural tube is formed okay it lacks any sensory cells but is considered to be olfactory chemoreceptor because it is um, uh, placed corresponding to the uh, nostril of cyclostomes which we will be learning it in, in your future classes okay so it is considered to be having a chemoreceptor even though it is not proved that colicus fit is considered to be a chemoreceptor then another is hashish group okay hash is um, what you call nephridium we learned it in excretory uh, system isn't it so hashish groove is found on the dosal wall and it is present uh, associated with the oral oral hood okay uh, even though the specific function is not being studied i mean uh, understood it has been considered as a sense organ okay then you have the sensory cells and papillae sensory cells are uh, actually those cells which are scattered all over the epidermis and uh, it is considered to be having uh, what you call uh, this one chemoreception okay and the papillae they are present on the oral cirri as well as on the velar tentacles they are chemoreceptors as well as tactile organs uh, so what are what is the function of these chemoreceptors they actually um, find out the uh, uh, the presence of food particles the size of the food particles etc okay so we have seen that the velum um, ha contains tentacles and these tentacles on the velum it forms a filter like structure allows only the smaller food particles to get inside the branchial sac isn't it similarly on the oral uh, hood region the oral cirri it also forms filter like structure and uh, permits the passage of only smaller particles so keeps up wards of all the unwanted particles plus the larger food particles so there actually the it functions the, the sensory structures present on the tentacles of the velum as well as the oral cirri on the oral hood there they actually helps to uh, uh, detect the uh, food particles okay the specific sized food particles the larger ones and the um, unwanted ones if they have to uh, dispose it of it needs the sensory structure okay then the last one is the free nerve endings as said it is just nerve endings right so far all the um, six we have already uh, discussed like eye spots infundibular organ the anterior pigment spot the colicus pit hashix groove and pit the sensory cells and papillae all these are um, uh, sensory structures which picks up the stimulus from the outside and hence they can be referred as exterior receptors okay but the uh, free nerve endings they are uh, entero receptors that is they pick up picks up uh, stimulus from inside from the muscles so these are actually the free nerve endings in muscles okay it ends in muscles and these are sensitive to internal stimuli especially the contraction of muscles and hence the reception is proprio receptors a contraction right so proprio receptors such kind of receptors are also found in our uh, uh, lungs okay 
the contraction and relaxation low keep coming back so free nerve endings it ends up in muscles and the main function is proprioception it picks up the stimulus of contraction okay so this is the end of it branchiostoma Uh, reproductive system it, it is not so unique uh, with respect to branchiostomal uh, reproductive system so with this we will be completing uh, the uh, what do you call uh, branchiostoma and uh, uh, we in the next session we will be uh, comparing branchiostoma with the urochordates and branchiostoma with the uh, what do you call vertebrates okay along with that we will also be discussing the affinities of urochordata with the vertebrata okay so um, and non chordate okay fine so with that we will be coming uh, to an end of uh, protochordates urochordata as well as cephalochordata is it okay so next week that is the coming monday you will be having um, an exam on uh, the phylum urochordata uh, sorry phylum cephalochordata that is a branchiostoma type species okay fine so thank you